Guys, welcome back to Lab Cyber. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. In today's video, we're going to continue the cyber attack series by presenting to you Trojans, which is a particularly nasty form of malware. You may have heard of them before, but in today's video, I'm going to give you a full breakdown of what Trojans are, what they do, how they can infect your system, the different types of Trojans out there, and most importantly, how you can prevent yourself from falling victim to a Trojan attack. Now, if you enjoy videos, about cybersecurity or what you want to learn about cybersecurity and you're new here to the channel please do subscribe and of course hit the bell so that you're notified whenever i upload a new tutorial now before i get into my presentation on trojans i'm going to play you a small clip from a movie called troy sit back relax enjoy the clip and i'll catch you at the end of it what is this an offering to Poseidon. So welcome back and what did you just watch like i said this was a clip taken from the movie troy i think it came out back in the year 2004 starring uh, brad pitt basically what you had in this movie was a war between the greeks and the trojans the greeks were trying to conquer the city of troy but because the trojans had like a really good army they had good archers and they had very very high walls the greeks were unable to conquer the city of troy so they came up with this genius plan where they would build this wooden horse, which you saw in the clip, and they would hide some of the soldiers inside of the horse. The idea here was that because the Trojans were very, very superstitious people, when they would see the horse, they would think, oh, this must be a gift from our gods. This is a gift from Apollo, the sun god. Let's take it back into our city and then worship this horse. So... That's exactly what happened the trojans they brought the horse back into their city not knowing that inside of this horse you actually had uh, greek soldiers hiding inside and then at night when the trojans were asleep the soldiers came out and of course they ended up opening up the main gates to the city and the rest of the greek soldiers now came in and that's how they ended up conquering the city of troy now the reason why i played you that clip is because in reality that's how trojans actually operate I've got my presentation in here, let's get started. So, they disguise themselves as legitimate software. This is the distinct quality or feature of Trojans. They may appear to be real applications or real software, but in reality, they're actually malicious software. Now, they're very, very common in mobile games and applications. A lot of times you have people who will go to the App Store, the iOS Store, they would see this game that looks like Candy Crush or Angry Birds and they would think, oh, this is a pretty cool game. Let me go ahead and install it, not knowing that behind the scenes, they're actually installing uh, a Trojan. Now, they're also very common in email attachments. Think of your classic phishing attack where the uh, attacker will send the victim an email with a malicious link. The victim clicks on that link and ends up installing the Trojan on their system. Now, once downloaded, Trojans can do different types of things like, for example, they can install a backdoor that would allow the hacker to gain remote access to the computer. They can, of course, spy on the victim by recording the keystrokes the victim types on the keyboard, the kinds of websites the victim visits and so on. And of course, the classic stealing of sensitive information. Now, there's a few things I want you to know about Trojans, okay? Some distinct features about them. 
they cannot run themselves. Typically, a Trojan would, would require the victim to do something, maybe like click on a link or visit a website or do something before the Trojans can actually run. Now, they can spread to other computers, turning them into bots. Think of like the bot attack, where they turn different types of computers into zombies. Those computers are typically infected with a Trojan malware before they can become zombies in a bot network. And of course, Trojans can also be programmed to be dormant and inactive until the host performs a certain kind of function, like visit a specific website or maybe open a particular type of document. So a victim can have Trojan on the computer for weeks, maybe even months without knowing because the Trojan right there is just dormant. It's lying quietly, waiting patiently until the victim does the exact thing required to make the Trojan active. This is how advanced uh, they can be. Now, when it comes to types of Trojans, there are many of them. There's over 20 of them. But because of time, I'm going to give you the big five, the ones that I believe are the most popular. You've got Banker, Download, and Remote Access, Exploit, and of course, Root Kit. Let's take a look at them individually. The first one right here is the Banker Trojan. Now, these Trojans have the ability to steal the credentials of the victim by spoofing the financial institution's uh, login page. You've got the image here of Bank of America. It looks like the login page for Bank of America. You've got the logo, the fields for the user ID and passcode, and of course the button for continue. But in reality, this is actually the login page for the Trojan malware. When the victim goes to this page, they will think, oh, I'm logging into the Bank of America website. They provide their ID and passcode. They press enter, and when they do so, the Trojan would send those credentials back to the hacker. These are very, very nasty Trojans. And it's not just the Bank of America login page. They can spoof the login pages for other types of banks and other types of financial institutions as well. That's why they're called Banker Trojans. Next, you've got the Download Trojans. Now, these would connect to a remote server in order to download additional programs, usually used in the first stage of an infection. Now, you might, you might be thinking, Okay, what exactly do they do specifically? The reason why these are used is because you've got plenty of types of anti-malware out there that can recognize malicious programs. They can recognize viruses, worms, and so on. Typically, the downloader Trojan is very, very, very small in size, and there is always a good chance that the anti-malware might miss the file being a Trojan. So once the file, because it's so small, goes through the anti-malware and again gets installed on the system, the malware now becomes active. I will now forcefully download the bigger, more malicious files. And in doing so, it might even be able to disable the anti-malware from being able to stop the bigger malicious files from being downloaded. That's why they're usually used in the first stage of an infection. So Next, we've got the RATs, the Remote Access uh, Trojans. These allow the attacker to gain remote control over the infected computer and are typically used in botnet attacks. Next will be the Exploit Trojans. Now, these take advantage of specific vulnerabilities within an application. So these are programmed to target specific applications that have specific types of vulnerabilities. And finally, you've got the Rootkit Trojans. These are very nasty because they prevent malicious programs from being detected, which enables malware to remain active. These are very powerful Trojans that can basically disable the anti-malware from being able to recognize all the malicious programs, and that's what they typically do. Very, 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 very nasty. All right, so let's imagine your system has been infected by a Trojan. What are the signs? How can you tell if your system has been infected by a Trojan there's two big ones. The first one would be the loss in computer performance. You notice your computer has become a lot more sluggish. Programs don't run quite as quickly as they used to. It could be that your computer has been infected with a Trojan. And of course, the second one would be the change in computer settings, like your BIOS settings. The time on your computer has changed. Uh, your desktop wallpaper has changed. Like certain default settings have just changed for no reason whatsoever. That could be a sign that your system has been infected with a Trojan. And of course, how would you now protect your computer from Trojan attacks? Classic, of course, use anti-malware. 
anti-phishing tactics. Don't be the kind of person who clicks on links in emails that look suspicious. And of course, regular updates. By performing regular updates, you'll prevent uh, the exploit rootkit from taking advantage. So use of anti-malware, anti-phishing tactics, and of course, run regular updates as often as possible. And before I round up today's tutorial, I'm going to give you three examples of Trojan attacks that are very, very, very popular that did a lot of damage. You can read more about them. You've got the Zeus Trojan, the CryptoLocker Trojan, and of course, the I Love You. <laughs> I Love You Trojan. That's a very, very, very interesting name for a particular uh, type of Trojan. That's it for today's video where I have given you a breakdown of what Trojans are, what they do, how you can tell if a system has been infected and of course uh, what you can do to prevent yourself from falling victim to a Trojan attack. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up, share this video with anyone who may feel might benefit from it. If you're new here to the channel, please do subscribe, hit the bell so they're notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. My name is Alex, it's been a pleasure. Stay safe out there and I'll talk to you next time. Cheers.